you can't go wrong with social work. No, you don't need to meet any extra licensing requirements here in Australia to become a social worker. You're thinking about an occupation that has a range of visa options available to it, then you're looking at social work. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new on here, I just want to warmly welcome you into this community. My name is Chioma, by the way. Well, in today's video, I want to talk about social work. Specifically, I want to address why you should consider studying social work here in Australia, especially if you're thinking towards studying as a pathway to permanent residency here in Australia. You can't go wrong with social work and I'm going to explain all of that in a minute. In this video as well, I am going to use this opportunity to address some frequently asked questions regarding social work education and maybe even social work practice. First of all, the question you might be asking would be why social work? Because social work is not the only occupation on the skilled migration list. Listen, <laughs> I can tell you this for free, that social work has very strong potentials towards permanent residency. I know that that is a statement of confidence, but I am confident because I have gone through that path myself and so I know what I am saying, okay? So social work is one of those occupations that has never been dropped from the skilled migration list, at least not since I've been here in Australia, which is seven years now. If you're familiar with that list or if you know anything about how immigration works and how skilled migration works, occupations get dropped from that list quite often some get added you know dropped and added and dropped and added again but not social work and social work is an occupation as well that is linked to a range of skilled migration visa options if you've been asking yourself why social work i'm just giving you reasons why you should consider studying towards social work here in Australia, okay? So talking about visa options, there's the 189, which is the skilled independent visa. This visa allows you to settle anywhere in Australia, okay? I call it the federal option because it is not linked to any particular state or territory. And then there's the 190 visa, which is state nominated, which just means that you need to nominate a particular state that you're interested in migrating to. And if you're granted that visa, you can only settle in that state for two years, at least two years after your visa grant. Then there's the 491 visa, which is linked to regional migration. It just means that just like with the 190 visa, you have to nominate a particular region within a particular state as the region you would like to settle in. And the 491 visa is granted for five years. It's a provisional visa. It's not a permanent residency visa, but it's a provisional visa that can lead to permanent residency. So the provisional requirements on that visa stipulate that you need to settle in your nominated regional area and work there for at least three years out of the five years. And once you meet that condition, you can go on and apply for permanent residency. Then there is the increasingly popular 482 visa, popularly known as the temporary skills shortage visa. So this visa, like I said, is a new addition to the visa family, okay, because it is tied to employer sponsorship. So with this visa, what basically happens is that you find an employer who is willing to sponsor you into Australia and then the employer can take you on for three years or four years or five years depending on the stream that you've come in through and that visa offers a pathway to permanent residency through another skilled nomination pathway which is the employer nomination scheme so the tss visa is a temporary visa it's not a permanent residency visa it's not a provisional visa but if you meet certain conditions while you are working for your particular employer then if your employer is happy they can sponsor you towards permanent residency but what i was saying is that if you're thinking about an occupation that has a range of visa options available to it then you're looking at social work because social work sits across all these visa options right so that's one reason why you should consider 
studying social work towards permanent residency here in Australia. Another reason, and I guess this one would answer another question that I get all the time, is related to licensing requirements for social workers. People usually ask me whether there are any extra licensing requirements they would need to meet after studying towards their social work qualification here, and the answer is no. You don't need to meet any extra licensing requirements here in Australia to become a social worker as long as you study towards an eligible qualification. So eligible qualifications are a Bachelor of Social Work or a Master of Social Work, okay? So at the very least, you need to have a Bachelor of Social Work to be recognized as a social worker and also to be eligible for permanent residency as a social worker. So once you study towards either of these qualifications, okay, and everything goes smoothly, you are a qualified social worker here in Australia. No extra licensing. Except, of course, you're looking towards um, at, um, the mental health area of specialization in social work practice and you want to become an accredited mental health social worker, in which case you might need to undergo more training after you acquire your base qualifications okay but that is something that is an ongoing process so you can start working while you undergo the extra training to become mental health accredited right so i hope that answers that question if you've been one of those people that have asked me that specific question now let me go on to address another question that i get asked a lot who can study social work in australia and people have asked me different versions of these questions. So some people would, first of all, give me a bit of their background, whether it's their professional background or their educational background. And they express concern that because they are coming from backgrounds that are unrelated to social work, they feel like they might not be eligible to enroll in the social work program. And I'm just going to give you good news again anyone can study social work anyone from any kind of background it doesn't matter what background you're coming from but what you need to keep in mind is that the two options available are studying towards a bachelor degree or studying towards a master degree so you might be asking how do i know which one is appropriate for me so basically if you're just leaving high school or you have a lower qualification maybe like a diploma you can choose to go for the bachelor program Okay, but if you already have a bachelor degree, again, it doesn't matter what area you have um, your bachelor degree is related to, it doesn't matter at all. You can apply to come study the Master of Social Work. If you have a bachelor degree that is unrelated to social work, what you will be required to do is to study a bridging course. That bridging course will most likely be a graduate diploma which can last anywhere between six months and 12 months. So that is the bridging course you need to complete first before you commence your Master of Social Work program. Here in Australia, the Master of Social Work can be called Master of Social Work or Master of Social Work Qualifying. I have also received questions from people asking me what the difference is between the two. As far as I can tell, and please verify this information for yourself, but as far as I can tell from my little research, the both of them are basically the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether the school you want to study at calls it a Master of Social Work or they call it a Master of Social Work Qualifying. From what I have seen, the course structures are the same. The units, that's the subjects you're going to be studying, are mostly the same across universities. So don't get hung up on that little detail of whether there's the qualifying attached to it or if it's just a master of social work. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Before I go ahead and answer another question, which is also frequently asked, I just want to remind you, if this video is hitting the right spots already, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you have watched up to this point, I want to believe that it's because something is making sense to you so maybe also consider subscribing if you want to join the family because you're going to be getting these sorts of value packed videos okay so let's move on to another question which i get asked a lot it's regarding schools where you can study so a lot of people have asked me if i can recommend any school um, and some people are very specific <laughs> in terms of their budget so they tell you that they 
wants a recommendation of a cheap school. So what I have usually told people is that I really cannot recommend any school because I feel like if I'm going to recommend something, it should be something that I have experienced, right? It's hard for me to recommend a school that I know next to nothing about because even though I have studied here in Australia, I studied in ACAP, just one school, okay? And there wasn't a lot of research that went into comparing schools when I studied at ACAP. Now I have made a video detailing my experience of studying at ACAP. If you would like to see that video, this is what it looks like. There's also going to be a link in the description. Okay, so you can go watch that video and maybe some of the experiences that I share in that video might resonate with you and you might want to study at ACAP. By the way, I am not an ACAP ambassador, okay? I This is not an endorsement of ACAP, but I'm just giving reasons why it's a bit difficult for me to recommend schools. However, what I am going to do is to point you towards two resources that I, that I think would help you in making comparisons between schools and between social work courses. You can see whether what these schools offer in terms of the course structure and also in terms of fees align with your wants or your needs or your priorities okay so the first resource would be the AASW website so AASW is the Australian Association of Social Workers and it is the regulatory authority for social workers here in Australia so anything that's got to do with the standardization of practice and education for social work here in Australia the AASW handles all of that so AASW have put out a resource on their website that lists all the accredited social work courses here in Australia. And I think it's really great that they have such a resource because it gives you the assurance that you're studying a course that has full accreditation from the AASW. So what you can do is you look at those schools and you can click on the links it takes you to the school and then you can find out the fee information from that school okay i know it requires a bit of work but i mean if you are looking towards migrating if you're looking towards studying i want to believe that a bit of research is necessary okay a bit of research should go into that process so that you know you're making the right decision right so that's the first resource. The next resource I am going to mention would be through the IDP website. So I know that they provide specialist education services. So IDP also have done a good job of comparing schools and this is the good news. They have also compared tuition fees according to schools. So you might just want to Google Master of Social Work in Australia fees and then look for the IDP option in your search results. I am also going to leave a link in the description that will lead you directly to the page I am referring to on the IDP website. But I am just saying if you want to go by Mr. Google, then you can use the same search term that I just suggested. So when you go on the IDP website, this is what it looks like. If you're after a bachelor degree, then you can switch out postgraduate for bachelor of social work in Australia fees and that i believe will also give you the options that you're looking for so yes i hope that answers your questions and really i didn't want this video to be to be too long there's still a lot of other things that i would like to share with you regarding social work here in australia especially for people who want to consider that as a pathway towards permanent residency okay but i'm not going to say all of that in one video I am only going to say this, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, turn on the notification so that you don't miss any upload. That way you can stay on top of things when I post them. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. My Instagram handle is usually up on the screen, but you can also find it in the description box, okay? So follow me on Instagram. You're more than welcome to send me a private um, DM on Instagram. I will eventually get around to answering you. Even if I don't do it immediately, please bear with me life is very busy okay but um, I find it easier to respond on Instagram so yeah maybe you want to follow me on Instagram I'll see you again in my next video bye bye and stay safe